last chance. <laughs> Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and the indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Okay. okay. Is there uh, any public participation? Yeah. He's one of us. Oh, okay. So we'll we'll, okay. <laughs> you want to introduce him now or later? Uh, I think when we come up here. Okay. Bill Fair enough. Suspense. All right. You'll just have to guess who it is. <laughs> That's <Go> fine. Adjourn. <laughs> no, no, no. I was, I, yeah, I was going to suggest we adjourn now. But I don't think they'd appreciate that. The next thing on the uh, agenda is committee reorganization. So this is when we get the chance to uh, appoint chair and vice chair. So we'll start with chair. Uh, is there a motion uh, for a chair? I move John Eisler. Second. Uh, chairman. This I'll raise and move the Wellington uh, Subcommittee <laughs> for the period of 2023. <laughs> Fiscal 2023 or calendar 2023? From today till when it ends. <laughs> Fair enough. And I heard a second from Doug. Any discussion? Frank. I'd just like to say that uh, I'm assuming that we'll vote favorably, but um, thank you very much for your service. It's been uh, great leadership. You've taken a lot of abuse, big shoulders. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, before the, I guess I can do this before or after the vote, but I appreciate everyone putting their confidence into me and I appreciate it uh, serving the town and I definitely learned quite a bit and I hope I didn't piss off the town administration too much. I'm hoping they're still talking to me. So I appreciate the chance to have had the opportunity. So thank you very much. Thank you, Frank. So motion to approve, I guess? Well, you already made the motion. The motion. This uh, was discuss right? any further discussion? Uh, Roll call then. I need to bring out my spreadsheet. That's all right. Mike. Uh, yes. Ed. Aye. Brad. Yes. Frank. Yes. Roger. Yes. Megan. Yes. Uh, Doug. Yes. <laughs> John. Yes. And the chair votes aye. Oh, how quickly. The former know. chair votes aye. <laughs> it's all yours. <laughs> well, that was quick. Uh, <laughs> Do you want a drum roll? Just done. Uh, I'm fairly confident I can piss off the administration much more effectively. <laughs> I, I didn't know that was the goal. When you do the minutes, I'll add some addendums that came in. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is our vice chair. Uh, do I have a motion for a vice chair? I would nominate Doug Davison, vice chair, Ways and Means, Burlington. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any discussion? Okay. Have a vote. Brad. Yes. Doug. Yes. <laughs> that was a little longer than I was expecting. It's a good sign. Uh, Mike. Fit in nicely. Perfect. I think you didn't hear yet. Mike. Oh, to me. Okay. Sorry. Uh, yes. Very good. Uh, Frank. Yes. Steve. Yes. Megan. Yes. Ed. Aye. And Roger. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and chair votes yes, nine zero zero. Congratulations, Doug. Thank you. Good choice. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is our fiscal 22 end of year changes uh, or transfers. Does everyone have a copy of that? There is a paper copy that went around. Uh, Whitney has said that the one mark draft is the same as that if you got the email. All right, and uh, 
would this be a good time to announce your new person? <laughs> oh, sure. So this is Sam Hockenberry, everyone. He's joining us as the new purchasing oh. slash financial analyst. Uh, so we just wanted to introduce <laughs> him being the new fiscal year. He just started feeling familiar with the way ways and means works. So this is Sam, everyone. Welcome, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. So Sam replaced, I don't know if anybody had met Brian. Uh, Brian was a first financial purchasing agent before, moved on to a different job. Sam replaced him, so it's not a new hire. Another announcement is we have hired a town accountant. Uh, I think it's on. Right? Uh, Ju um, Juling De La Reyes is going to be joining us beginning on August 1st as the new town accountant, so you'll be able to see her if we meet in the fall uh, or at the very least when we start getting together for budget season. Excellent. Okay. Uh, so I guess we'll go through these one at a time here. and We need to vote on these individually, I'm assuming? Um, no, I think we can vote on them all. We can do it all as, yep. as, as submitted. One big package. Yep. Okay, great. Unless there's something we want to hold and vote, you know, like town meetings. So. Sure. Uh, okay. Uh, over to you. If you could describe the various transfers, please. So, um, just by way of a little bit of, well, first, let me stop. I do want to say, while I have the chance, thank Steve for his service for the last couple of years. We could not have gotten through the difficulties of the last two years without uh, your leadership. So I really appreciate your responsiveness and, and I want to make sure that I say that before I go any further. Thank you very um, much. You're welcome. And so just by way of background, um, for anybody that's not familiar, um, we used to do this, I think, as a town meeting article um, in May. And as you might imagine, we didn't really have full information at that point. So you always have the danger of moving money that doesn't need to be moved or not, meet, need, not moving enough and then having to have another meeting after the fact. So we've been doing it this way for probably about three years now um, just to make sure that everything is accurate and we're only doing what needs to be done. So you see here, um, we've got a list of about eight items. Um, is it eight, I'm not exactly sure. yeah. eight items. So we have um, several deficits um, that we need to correct with surpluses on the other side. So those, the line number references the line that's voted in the budget. So as you might remember, salaries roll up, expenses roll up, and special accounts roll up. So any deficits in those total lines as voted need to be corrected before the end of the fiscal year to close. Um, so these are the items that we have identified and these are the sources that we have identified um, to close out that deficit. And I don't know if you wanna discuss each one line by line or if anybody has any questions, but we can give it like a brief overview if that's helpful. Maybe if you could just give a quick overview, overview on each line now, sorry. Sure. Um, so the first one we have is town meeting and reports. Um, and as you know, our town meetings have gotten a little bit more complicated lately with the uh, additional AV needs and um, workers. Again, I always call them checker inners. I don't think that's the correct term. I don't know what it is. Um, <laughs> um, so, uh, and then the high school students, the AV, AV students who help um, do all that. So we've just um, run a little bit higher this year uh, on that. So we've identified, uh, we had some surplus in legal um, to correct that. Then we have uh, the deficit in the select board salaries, which was due to uh, the retirement of several employees, um, the buyouts for those retirements. So that's kind of an outlier that shouldn't continue. Uh, town, uh, town clerk, which is largely, I'm sorry, that one we corrected. Uh, Board of Appeals, that's just a function of the uh, recording secretary and the amount of hours needed to work uh, for that. So that's a year by year difference. Um, let's see, the police, special accounts that was due to uh, increased fuel costs. They ran over in there, so we're correcting it with their um, expense account. Uh, the next one is fire, and that is largely due to coverage needed for injured on duty, so um, John can definitely do more detail on that, but uh, I'll 
do you want do you want that now? Uh, sure. So, so I can add a little bit. And I know that uh, Chief Patterson had shared an email with Mike Hardy, who shared it with you all. Um, this year, it isn't so much the amount of injuries that we've had or uh, vacancies that we had. It was with the severity of some of them. So we had 10 folks that were out uh, more than three months this year. Um, one firefighter who was out for 10 months, one who was out for eight months due to serious injury or or uh, illness. So uh, overtime has been a little bit of a battle for us the past few years, and we've worked hard with it. Uh, but this year, this you know, we had talked about this earlier during the budget season and, and mentioned to Steve we might even thought, thought we might even have to come for a reserve fund transfer at one point. Um, but we decided we could we could make it with the the rest of the budget and surpluses. Uh, we don't we don't expect this to continue. You know, uh, you can't predict when injuries and illnesses are going to come. Um, but we work hard to prevent the injuries, and um, it just happened to be a real bad year for that. I'll go back to the easy ones. Um, <laughs> Disability Access Commission, uh, same thing. They are just, it's just a function of the number of hours needed for the recording secretary for those meetings. Uh, ran over a little bit. Um, and then library salaries, the, the overage was due to the retirement buyout of a longtime employee. And I believe that's it. So one point just to add on the retirements is we try to do our best to cover them within the budget by uh, either holding, uh, not filling the position right away uh, if you can, sometimes you can't. This, the retirement in the library just happened to happen uh, in, at the end of April. So there just wasn't enough of a gap to make up all of it. Uh, there was some money in there in their line to, to cover a, a good portion of it, but that's just what was remaining, the several thousand dollars there. Um, and I apologize, Mike. Uh, I didn't ask for a subcommittee report. It's my understanding that you didn't get a chance to have a meeting on this. Is that correct? Or? No, just, uh, I just got the, the email, a little clarification from Chief Patterson, um, which everybody hopefully got a chance to look at. Can I add something to that too? The, uh, the, there was certainly, certainly some wisdom, some wisdom for July 15th to do these transfers by the legislature when they created the Municipal Modernization Act and we're very appreciative to it. Um, but it does, it is still very tight for us to uh, get the final payroll posted, get you know the bills in for the final warrants. We haven't even finished encumbrances yet. Uh, so uh, we don't, most of the time there isn't really a need for a, for a subcommittee because they're pretty straightforward, but this fire one could have used the subcommittee. So that's really on us. We should have come in earlier and said, you know, I know we've talked about it a few times, but if you want to have more detail, we can. So uh, luckily the chief was able to get with Mike, at least through email. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Uh, uh, just a follow up question on the fire injuries. Um, is there enough in the sort of, of, of sort of normal physical training and health support that, I'm not sure how to ask the question, maybe yeah. I can't answer it, but um, injuries can be unavoidable, yeah. usually are, but do we have enough programs in place for you know, physical fitness and, and make sure the firefighters are ready for the job? <laughs> or, or is there something future, in the future that can be done? So we did. We had a long conversation with with the chiefs about this. Is there anything that we can do to prevent this in the future, or, or were these just really unavoidable? And they did say that they were going to try to uh, uh, tweak some of the practices they do for physical uh, training, and then something that the police department had put into place a couple years ago, um, which with uh, groups that trained together, and they brought in an actual trainer and showed people how to work out or or how to do. Uh, more like occupational training. So figure out what workout you need to do that's gonna help you uh, from getting hurt. Uh, you know, p f fire, a lot of the injuries we see are knees and shoulders, uh, which are common given their job. Uh, they, they work very hard to prevent those, and most of these aren't, aren't that. They're, you know, backs or falls or things like that. Uh, Mike? Oh, thanks. So the, the one side of that um, that transfer I didn't check into was on the police side. Just uh, uh, wondering why there was such a surplus on the on the salaries that we could we could um, 
you know, pull all that money out. Mr. Chairman. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mike. I, I, I neglected to talk about that. So the police, the, the, why we were so lucky to have such a surplus on the police is we went, we didn't fill the captain position after Deputy Chief Kirshner was appointed last June 30th. The captain position wasn't filled until just last month. So we went a whole year without a captain, but we also had two vacancies of officers as people retired that were extended periods of time where we didn't have uh, an officer. So we had more than three full-time salaries that weren't being used uh, throughout the year. Okay, great, thank you. Frank. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, John, could you just recap for the retirements, what are the um, things that account for the the monies that are needed to fulfill a retirement. Sure. So um, the, the big one is, well, the two big ones, the only two are vacation and, and sick. Vacation, you can have at, at the end of the year, you can have one and a half times your allotted vacation time. So if, if a year ends you can and you have five weeks, you can have seven and a half weeks. So that's just how the math works. Um, and that's non-negotiable. You know, you have to pay someone their vacation time. It's, a, it's the law. Uh, the sick time has to d is different for each unit, uh, but each unit does have something in it. Uh, all of the retirements that we've talked about here are BMEA. That's our sort of our catch-all union. That's uh, all the folks that aren't either public safety or DPW union. So it's uh, clerical positions, it's uh, engineering, um, the inspectors, things like that. So these those folks have. I'm sorry. Those uh, those folks can buy maybe. It's either 60 or 100 days, depending on when you started. So they have to have 100 days accumulated over there. You know, the, the, the four people that we're talking about that retired, I think, worked over a combined 150 years here or something like that. So. Well, that that's consistent with what I thought. But I thought the negotiated settlements account was hoped to have enough of a buffer to cover that. Yeah, that's what we hope, and we carry that forward. And, um, you know, it, it, would be, it could be a place that we, we could go for that. Um, but if there we is. couldn't cover it. Oh, I see. So you, you left a residual in the negotiated settlements as a result. Yeah, I think at the end of this year we may carry $30,000 yeah. uh, okay. forward. It really doesn't matter how you do that. Okay, thank you. What it, presumably one difference is negotiated settlements can carry over, whereas this can't. Which is why if we can do it in the budget, that's what so we're trying to do. So it does make a difference which one you leave. I thought the negotiated settlements, though, it could, it could carry over, but it can't. It has to be spent for things in that fiscal year, does it not? Well, it can carry over, but it, can, it has to be spent for the buyouts because those are multi-year things. Right. Okay, thank you. Good. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Nope. Second. Very good. Okay, so this is approving... Four hundred sixty-nine thousand eight hundred ninety-five and thirty-five cents of worth of transfers. Uh, let's see. All right, uh, Brad. Yes. Doug. Yes. Mike. Yes. Frank. Yes. Steve. Yes. Megan. Yes. Ed. Yes. Roger. Yes. Chair votes yes, that's nine zero zero. All right, uh, next on the agenda is our approval of minutes. We have four. Thanks, thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have four sets of minutes to approve. I believe that Steve had some comments on those. So as you do each week, <laughs> You'll highlight them, okay. Yeah, so I'm 427 and uh, 54. I have comments. Okay, uh, well, the first one is 427. Any comments? <laughs> Any comments? Yes, there was one typo that John pointed out. Um, he didn't specify where, but I had used 5185 instead of 585. Do you remember which line that was? That was on the cable fund. Oh, yes, okay. So that was on the cable fund. And then Brad disavows, uh, that was the other one. And then Doug had mentioned uh, 
that we should add the lines. During the Sculpture Park discussion, Bob, Buck Bob Buckley spoke, I believe as a member of the Sculpture Park Committee. He assured us that this would not become a regular request and that it was a carryover event due, the, due to the impact of COVID on the local business community. So I would be amending the, the cost of the PEG Enterprise Fund and adding that line to the discussion on the Sculpture Park. Otherwise, the minutes are as sent out. Any other comments? Uh, we just add Bob as a guest also. Yeah. It was, uh, Bob Buckley as a guest. Uh, he wasn't oh, listed as an attendance. Yeah. Yep. Would it work out, Mr. Chairman, to vote all of them as a block? We can't. I, I think we have an issue and people may abstain differently yeah. as they always yeah. the issue. Sorry, oh. I have to use. I, I could be, try. I have to get used to being quiet. <laughs> uh, never hold back, Steve. Uh, <laughs> Stop trying before, so. <laughs> exactly. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the 427 minutes as amended. Second. Second. Thank you. Brad. Yes. Uh, Doug. Yes. Mike. Yes. Frank. Yes. Steve. Uh, yes. Megan. Yes. Ed. Yes. Roger. Yes. Chair votes yes. That's 900. Okay, the minutes for May 4th, I believe you had some comments on that. Brad disavows being at that meeting at, at all costs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Although I will just amend the attendance and leave out at the all costs. <laughs> Fair enough. Any other comments? People Should do approve. Thank you. Second. Thank you. All right. Uh, Brad. Staying. <laughs> <laughs> Threw me off there. Uh, Doug. Yes. Mike. Yes. Frank. Yes. Steve. Yes. Megan. Yes. Ed. Yes. Roger. Yes. Chair votes yes. That's 801. Minutes for May 11. Any comments there? I would like to thank the vice chair at the time for running the meeting in, in, the, in my absence as I was at Leahy for an unscheduled medical procedure. So I appreciate that. But I will not put that in the minutes. I'm glad it had a happy ending. Uh, any other comments? Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. Brad. Abstain. Doug. Yes. Mike. Yes. Frank. Yes. Steve. Abstain. Megan. Abstain. Ed. Yes. Roger. Yes. Chair votes yes. That's 603. And finally, the minutes for May 16th. I have no amendments. <laughs> No amendments. Motion to approve. Second. Very good. All right. Uh, Brad. I'll vote yes for a change. <laughs> Doug. Yes. Mike. Yes. Frank. Yes. Steve. Yes. Megan. Yes. Ed. Yes. Roger. Yes. Chair votes yes. That's nine zero zero. I believe that's the end of our agenda here. Uh, just for planning purposes, I believe our next meeting will be in, in July in preparation for the next town meeting. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. And September. 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 July. Did I not say September? You said July. Thank you for the correction. Yes, September. Yeah, we, we wouldn't have missed that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no chance. <laughs> you don't know wouldn't get but a not that much. You wouldn't get anybody. <laughs> okay. Any further business for today? Motion to adjourn. Second. Very good. I'm waiting to make All that motion. All in favor? Yay. All right. Good we night. are adjourned.